Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'd like you to close your eyes and picture a, a hospital delivery room. A new mom has just given birth to her first child, and the young son is placed in her arms. She holds him close. She reaches down to tap his nose, to squeeze his little chubby cheeks, to let that tiny baby hand curl those oh-so-small fingers around her. There's something about just the right touch that says, I love you. It communicates closeness, assurance, comfort, warmth, happiness. Touch. Touch tells you that the other person is alive, is real that they are there, and that you are there also. Brothers and sisters, we need just the right touch, to touch and to be touched in just the right way. Now, research has shown that children who grow, out, or grow up without much touch, ones who are abandoned or, or left alone for a a lot, of their, a lot of their childhood. Well, they grow at a slower rate. They're more sickly. They have trouble in social interaction. They display more angry and depressed emotions. And, of course, it doesn't stop after you grow up either. When you meet that special someone, you want to hold hands. It's almost like magnets are, in, are attached. You want to touch, to caress a cheek, to put your arm around them, to sit close. I've told you about my car that I had in Denver, right? My 69 Pontiac Catalina. Well, it had a bench seat. And so it was much easier for me to put my arm around Holly as we were dating than, well, than if we had the Volkswagen we have now with the, you know, the center console and the gear shift. No, that was a good car for our, for our first date. You know, uh, like Holly and I, probably those of you who are married or who have been married, you might remember that, that special, subtle communication, that way that you could silently say to your spouse, I love you. It's a secret touch. It says and communicates so much. No, we need that right touch, to touch and be touched in just the right way. Because the right kind of touch says love, assurance, closeness, comfort, happiness. To touch that other person says, I'm here, I'm alive, I'm real. We also need just the right touch touch and to be touched in just the right way by God. And we are. The church has a special word that we use, a, a fancy sort of Latin word, to describe when God could be touched and touch us. Incarnatio, or as we might say, incarnation. God came down to earth. He took on human flesh and blood when the Virgin Mary conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, she gave birth to Jesus, fully divine, but also fully human. Jesus was someone she could touch. And yes, when Mary touched Jesus, tapped his nose, squeezed his little cheeks, let him curl his tiny fingers around hers, she was touching God, and God was touching her. God became flesh and dwelt among us. People saw him. They heard him. They touched him. Incarnation. 
incarnation because we need to be touched in just the right way. Not only by one another, but especially by God. And we have a God who became flesh and dwelt among us to touch and be touched in just the right way. John says people could see Jesus, could listen to him, could touch him with their hands. Jesus is God incarnate and his touch says love, closeness, warmth, assurance, joy. His touch says he is alive. He is real. He is there. And so are you. Now you know why leprosy is such a, a devastating disease in biblical times. And while scripture uses this word to describe a variety of skin diseases, well leprosy also destroys the nerve endings so that you can't actually feel anything. You lose that sense of touch. But even worse, you are banished from the community. No one could touch you or even come near you. You became untouchable. And you lost that love and that warmth. The closeness and joy that comes with touch. Were you still alive? Were you real? To the lepers... It didn't seem so. Even today it happens. The loss of touch or being touched. A child abandoned. A child left alone for hours on end. A child who doesn't have a lap to sit on as they listen to a book. Or a marriage gone bad. No touches of love. No, no secret handshakes or hand squeezes. No caress of the cheek, no, no big bear hugs. But the most devastating loss of touch in this life is that of death. Sometimes families will stay in the hospital room after someone has died. I sat once with a young woman who would lost her father in a house fire. She could touch his hand caress his face, but the skin was cold and lifeless. He couldn't touch back. Her father was gone. There was no more touch. But the most horrific loss of touch is when we no longer can touch God and he no longer touches us. And we have another word in the church for that. We call that hell. Certainly the, uh, the hell fires, the brimstone, the smoke, that sounds very, very bad. But really the loss of touch, that total separation from God, that means no love, no warmth, no closeness, no joy, no assurance, no peace, no right And that really is terribly frightening. And that is why God becomes incarnate. He becomes flesh and blood. And his blood purifies us so that, so that we could keep on touching him now and forever. On the cross, Jesus takes on that most devastating loss of touch. He cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus no longer touches his Father in heaven. His Father is no longer touching him. And there upon the cross, it is devastating, it is frightening, it is horrific because Jesus is taking death and hell at their very worst, the loss of of touch with God. He takes that so that we could touch and be touched by God forever. And then Jesus rises from the dead. We say that because He lives, we too shall live. We can also say that we touch 
because he touched us. Recall last Sunday, Mary, after her eyes were opened, she clings to her Lord. She touches him. Or even Thomas, poor old doubting Thomas, who gets something of a bum rap. He wasn't there when Jesus first appeared from the dead. He, he wouldn't believe unless he touched Jesus. And a week later, Thomas is now with the disciples, and Jesus appears. He says to Thomas, because he knows what Thomas said, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Just the right touch. And Thomas says, My Lord and my God. We too need to touch and be touched by Jesus in just the right way. We need to be touched and to touch him for our faith to grow and to stay healthy. And where does this happen? In our baptism, the sign of the cross is made on our foreheads and on our hearts to mark us as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. The water touches our head and it runs down our cheek. And Jesus is there. Just as he welcomed the little children, he is blessing anyone who comes to him in those refreshing waters. At the baptismal font, we touch and are touched by Jesus in just the right way. And when we come up to the altar, we see and touch Jesus once again. He has promised to be in with and under that piece of bread, that sip of wine, his true body, and his most precious blood. Not a cold statue, not a lifeless and distant God, but living, breathing, real Jesus there, right there, flesh and blood among us, touching us, us touching him. And in that sacrament, Jesus is close. And he is saying, I love you. He is giving assurance and comfort and joy as he purifies us from all sin. He's real. He's present. He is alive. And so are we when we touch the body and the most precious blood. We need just the right touch, to be touched in just the right way by Jesus. We need the greetings and handshakes, the hugs and the holds. We need the blessing and water. We need the body and blood. We need to touch and be touched by Jesus now in this life and also face to face, just as Thomas did. And we do so in eternity. We will one day, too, have that joy and that wonder of touching Jesus to put our hands into those marks and into his side. His resurrection is our hope in touching, and being touched. And it doesn't end at the grave. It is ours once again on that last day and then for all eternity. For the leper, the abandoned child, the brokenhearted, the grieving parent, the daughter who remembers. We need just the right touch. To be touched in just the right way. And Jesus' incredible gift to us is that we are. And that we will. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.